Hello, and welcome back, or perhaps for the first time, to Black Jade Island. For those of you who don't know, Black Jade is my hard mode island. Hard mode is a special set of rules created by Nintendox to make the game just a little bit more challenging. It was storming out, like with thunder and lightning in the whole bit. I can't remember the last time I saw something like that happen in Animal Crossing. I think, maybe I never have? Anyway, the important bit is that I didn't have to water my crops today. The HHA continues to condescend to me about my decorating choices. While I was hunting for seashells, I fished up a tire that I left out to attract flies. I did the same thing last week as well, but I needed to pick it up to make more of those trash bags for outside of Jacob's house. I also picked up this bottle with a recipe for an angled signpost in it, which I think is very funny. Because the game can only face things in the cardinal directions, if you want an item that exists at an angle, they needed to make a whole new item for that. And I think that's just hilarious. Daisy May was on my island and selling turnips for 110 each. I got a recipe for some Sen Maizuke barrels that I want to throw outside my farmhouse as decoration, and it said that it took 30 turnips, so I bought 11 bunches to make my barrels with, but apparently it meant 3 full stacks of 10 bunches of turnips. So it was 300 turnips, which for 110 each, not gonna happen. This can wait until Daisy May's prices go down. I headed over to the Able Sisters and made my shirt for the week. I don't really follow hockey. I'm not entirely sure when hockey happens. I'm not really sure why the spirit moved me to make a Flyers themed shirt, but that's what I made. Once that was done, I headed into the dressing room to make an outfit for myself. Because of my turnip mistake, I was too poor to afford to buy anything at Nook's Cranny, so I left to do some stretches. The hot item for the day was wood and block bookshelves, and I have a wealth of soft wood. So I figured I would make a million of those and then have enough money to make my purchases for the day. But once I got the items out of my storage, Wendy decided that she wanted to come over for a visit. She gave me a pair and then played high card, low card with me, and then I remembered that I have a crafting table inside my house. So I went to make, like, a billion of those bookshelves, and by the time I was finished, Wendy decided that she was tired of me ignoring her and went home. Sorry, not sorry, Wendy. I have important business to be about. I ran over to Nook's Cranny to sell all of my bookshelves, and then left without buying anything. And then once I got through the loading zone, I remembered that I had made all of those bookshelves for a reason, and I turned around to buy that table that I wanted. I got my fortune told. One of my two times miles tasks was to catch five bugs, but because it was storming, no bugs were spawning, so I headed over to a cabin island in the hopes that it would be sunny, and I would be able to catch some bugs there. It was a vine and moss island, which was great for me. I need to replenish my moss stock after using so much of it for decorating. I also caught this beta fish in the river, which surprised me because I figured beta fish would live in ponds? I'm not sure why I thought that, but that is what I thought. My last two times Miles task was to go diving for sea creatures, which didn't feel especially safe to do in a thunderstorm, but into the ocean I went, just long enough to catch the three sea creatures I needed to polish off my two times Miles task. I checked my fossils and got some coffee, and that was it for my chores for the day. I was then free to focus on my next project, the boardwalk. Well, but first I wanted to finish up the pond area I had left outside Wendy's house. You see, that pond needed a garden bench, just so badly, but I didn't have a recipe for one. Fortunately, Kina of Pineshire came in clutch once more and was willing to trade me too for some fish bait I had. Thank you, Kina. I spent some time disassembling the market area since that's where I want my new boardwalk to be. Goodbye, Market Area. You served me well, and will live on in our hearts. I had been planning on streaming at least a part of the building process. So before the stream, I went into my storage and grabbed all of the items that I knew I was going to need, and then I organized them into little piles based on what I was planning on doing with them. I wanted to have a little cafe area, a clothing store, an arcade, and a seaside carnival area. The idea was that if I had all the materials and organized them before the stream, I could just focus on doing the actual building during the stream, but uh... You all know how these things go. I did a little work on the cafe portion of the build, and then I thought, you know what would look really good? If I put some star shards outside of Wendy's pond area. So I ran off to do that really quick. I managed to finish the cafe part of the build during the stream, 
Well, I say finished with heavy air quotes because everyone was doing me a really big favor and pretending that the wooden tables were all small cafe tables because the cafe tables were coming in the mail and they just weren't there yet. My cafe tables came in the mail, but before I could do anything with that, I needed to do my chores. I harvested and watered my crops, my fruit trees, and then went hunting for seashells. On my beach, I found a recipe in a bottle for a golden dung beetle, which is a very funny item to have. I decided to move these coconut trees to a different part of the beach. Ignore Flick, this isn't about him. While I was hunting for fossils, Wendy decided to park it on top of the fossil I was trying to dig up, and I kept accidentally talking to her while I was trying to dig, so I physically shoved her out of my way so I could get to it. Remember how in older games your villagers would get mad at you for pushing them? Do they still do that? I didn't want to try it for myself because I'd, it would feel too mean. I sold the bugs that I had in my pocket, but I decided to hold on to the banded dragonfly. Because I already had two of them in bug jail, it only made sense to use it as my model for the day. I checked my fossils and got some coffee, and then I headed over to Harv's Island. From red, I bought this fake statue from decorating purposes. I still want a fake Valor statue to put outside my museum, but if I can't get it before the time comes for me to work on that build, I'll just use this one. I checked my fortune. The Nooklings were buying turnips for 110 each. I didn't go for it, but I thought it was funny enough to mention it here. I bought this couch and then headed over to the Able Sisters to make my purchases there. I went diving to clear out my last two times miles task, and then I did a little more diving to try and scrape together some more money. I'm ridiculously close to being able to pay off my home loan, but diving is still boring as hell, so I stopped pretty quickly. I did my stretches, filled my pockets with bugs to sell to Flick. Well, that was the plan. After a few catches, my net broke and I decided that it would be best to give it up there, because I had some very important decorating to do. I used the arch stone pathing as a placeholder until I could get around to making a custom path for this area. I ended up not being very happy with how the area was turning out, so I decided to step away and really think about how I was going to lay this all out. I got some more things that I wanted for the boardwalk in the mail, so I ran over to set those out. I'm not crazy about where I left the bench, but I can always fix it later. First, I need to worry about actually completing my daily tasks starting with harvesting and watering my crops. Sparrow had a thought bubble, but he just wanted me to deliver an apology gift to Jacob. Not sure why Sparrow has been causing so much drama on my island lately. He needs to calm down. I did my stretches before heading over to deliver the gift to Jacob. In return, he gave me a shirt I can't wear. I checked my fossils and got some coffee. Then I headed over to Nook's Cranny. Turnips prices were up to 138 a piece today, so I thought they would probably go up even more and held off on selling them. Instead, I made some purchases. I got my fortune told. Red was on my island, so I couldn't check to see what he replaced the robust statue with yet. I headed over to his shop and... So the Jolly Painting. It's come up in his stock before. I thought that if it had the little wheat sprig on his chest, it was a fake. And if it wasn't there, it was real. It turns out that I had that backwards. I was so confident that I didn't double check myself by looking at an art guide. I didn't even look at the other paintings. I just slammed my money down on the counter, blissfully unaware that I was being scammed. And then I went to redo the boutique area. I also decided that I wanted to move my Nook's Cranny and Able Sisters down to the boardwalk as well, so I blocked out some space for them. I knew that I wanted some fencing behind the boutique to use as decoration. I made a couple different options to see which ones I liked best. I ended up going with this tall lattice fencing that I had painted purple. I asked Thomas if we could move Patty's house to the designated area. A throwback rocket fell from the sky so I decided to throw ha, it into the pile with the rest of the items that I'm planning to use in my increasingly elaborate amusement park area. I've discovered that I really like layering the hedges with tall fences behind them. I think it looks really nice, especially in the spring when the hedges are a nice shade of green. And I decided to take the plumeria bushes that I didn't really have any other plans for and use them to line the side of the shop. I'm a little concerned that having them all be the same color will be a bit boring, but we'll just have to wait to see when they come into bloom. If I don't like it, I can always swap them out later. I also stole some of the plants from my living room to use to decorate the boutique a bit more. 
The flooring still isn't what I want, but other than that I would call this area done. I think it came out really nice. I decided to finish my day off by finally paying off my home loan and getting the last house upgrade. Isabel announced that we have a visitor at our campsite. Oh no! I harvested and watered my crops and then ran over to the boardwalk area to noodle around with that and put off having to deal with the campsite visitor for just a little bit longer. But the very instant I put my hard hat on, I noticed a golden balloon floating by. You know what that means. I have the recipe to make a golden slingshot, my first golden tool recipe. Eugene randomly stopped me to give me a pair of sunglasses that I didn't really want, but it's the thought that counts. Maybe I can re-gift them to somebody at some point. Maybe Wendy. I think she'd like them, assuming she doesn't get booted off my island by the campsite visitor. A black rose spawned for my red roses. If I can clone this one, the pair has a chance to finally give me that blue rose. The red roses also have a very small chance of spawning one, but the black ones have a slightly higher chance at 5% rather than 1.5%. Sahara was on my island, so I bought one of every size of rug as well as mystery flooring and wallpaper. And I couldn't justify putting it off any longer. I had to go see who was at the campsite. It was Candy. She's cute enough, I suppose, but I don't really need any more peppy villagers. Unfortunately, I have no choice. I have to convince her to come to my island. Double unfortunately, I was having just the hardest time with the card games she kept challenging me to. It took like seven tries to eventually convince her. And then she had the audacity to replace Norma. So now I have three peppy villagers and no normal type villagers. And what's worse? I never managed to get that cutting board off of Norma. My island is in shambles. I may never feel joy again. With a heavy heart, I checked my fossils. Blathers let me know I had gotten scammed by Red. And then I went and got some coffee. I did my stretches before heading over to Harv's Island. Red was selling a genuine, it's genuine, I checked, graceful painting, so I bought it before getting my fortune told. Once back on Black Jade, Sparrow randomly decided to give me a present, and then I finished off my two times miles tasks. Bamboo speakers were the hot item, so I crafted about ten of them to sell at Nook's Cranny. While I was there, I checked my turnip prices and they had dropped down to 58 bells a turnip. I bought a ceiling fan and a pair of teeny tiny sunglasses before calling it a day. Today marks the start of the stamp rally. I really like the stamp rally. It's super cute and a good excuse to actually go inside the museum exhibits, which I rarely do. I started the day by harvesting and watering my crops. Leaf was on my island and he was selling pansies. I only have white and blue pansies on my island for some reason, so I bought some red and yellow ones for flower breeding purposes. Timmy and Tommy were buying turnips for 152 bells each, and I decided to sell now before the turnip prices caused me any more heartache. While I was in there, I bought this thing. I don't know what it is or what it does, but I wanted it. And then I headed over to the Able Sisters. I don't generally mention it, but I talked to Sable today. Apparently, her favorite true crime show is on on Thursdays, and she would be super into true crime, wouldn't she? But that does bring up troubling implications now that I think about it. Are there are there Animal Crossing serial killers? Like, was there a Jack the Ribbit? A Hog Bundy? A third serial killer pun? I chose to ignore those questions and bought a hair clip for $4,000. The Animal Crossing economy is also very strange. With my purchases finished, I headed over to Resident Services to talk to Thomas about moving Nook's Cranny. For some reason, I was worried that it would cost more bells than it did. It only cost 10,000 like it did to move a villager's house. I was also concerned that I wouldn't be able to shop once I set up the move, which is why I made sure to wait until after my purchases were complete. This was also not the case. Once I had the shop set up where I wanted it, I fixed the alley behind it so it looks a bit neater. I also started a walkway that will lead people past the boardwalk area, but I have no idea what I'm going to do with this area. It'll really depend on how much space my amusement park area takes up, but at least I'll have plenty of space for it, what with Norma's house, well, Candy's house now, and all the shops moved out of the way. I did my stretches, got my fortune told, checked my fossils, donated the really real for real this time painting to the museum, 
Since the stamp rally is going to be going on until the end of the month, I decided it would be better to take one section a day rather than blitz through the whole thing in one go. So today I decided to do the insect room just to get that out of the way. Once that was done, I got my coffee, I finished off my 2 times miles task, and then tragedy struck Black Jade once more. Jacob decided that he wanted to move out. I started the day by harvesting and watering my crops. While I was hunting for fossils, I found a lost item. From the description, I assumed it was fuchsias. It turns out that I had the right personality type for the wrong villager. It actually belonged to Rocket. She gave me some garbage I didn't want for returning it to her. Kix was on my island, so I bought some bags and socks before heading over to the Able Sisters. I know from yesterday that the shop won't close when I ask them to move, but I was feeling paranoid about it and decided to make my purchases there before asking them to move anyway. Once I got that squared away, I went to say my final goodbyes to Jacob. I'm sorry, Jacob. I didn't pay as much attention to you as I probably should have. Then it was back to circling my island hunting for fossils. There was a particularly sneakily placed one hiding between Rocket and Jacob's houses, which I thought was just kinda mean. Natural garden chairs were the hot item, so I made a bunch to sell so I could buy myself a second fighting game cabinet from Nook's Cranny. I also made these tall stone lanterns to replace the street lamps that I have in the bamboo forest. I think these fit the vibe a bit better. Sparrow had a thought bubble, but he needed to wait until I finished catching this black bass. Once I had released it, I went over to check and he just wanted to come visit my house, which was a lot more embarrassing after I had cannibalized my living room for boutique decorations. Sparrow did the usual guest things, gifted me a shirt I can't wear, demanded we play high card low card, whined about how he wanted to see more rooms in my house. While we were upstairs, I laid down on the egg bed hoping Sparrow would get the hint, and this looks like the least comfortable bed in existence. And I am speaking from a place of authority on this. I've had some uncomfortable beds in the past, let me tell you. When that didn't work, I took him down to the utility room and he would not stop playing with my vacuum. I had to physically push him out of the room to stop him from playing with my vacuum. I don't know what his fascination with the vacuum is, but I do not care for it. Eventually, he finally decided that he wanted to go home and I was able to move on with my day. I bought that arcade cabinet I wanted before heading up to the museum. On the way, I snatched this butterfly rocket was hunting out of spite, and then I made sure she was looking when I released it. I checked my fossils, which was my last two times miles task for the day, and then I headed into the aquarium for the stamp rally. While I was in there, I took some time to look at the fish, and the oarfish is just so funny to me. It doesn't seem to have a swimming animation, it just hangs out at a slight angle and doesn't move. Granted, I don't know anything about oarfish, maybe that's just how they are.
Once I got my completion stamp, I headed up to get some coffee, and then it was off to Harb's Island to get my fortune told. Back on Black Jade, Fuchsia interrupted my hunt for this banded dragonfly to give me a corner sofa. It was irritating at first, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. While we were talking, the dragonfly had gotten itself trapped in my farm, and I was able to catch it very easily. Thank you, Fuchsia. Then it was time to redecorate the living room. I debated using this dark red wallpaper, but switched to this dark brown one instead. The dark brown walls with the red rug feel very classy to me. I feel so fancy in this room. My only complaint is that I wish I had a higher variety of hanging lights because none of the ones I own fit the vibe that I was going for. I am planning on putting all four of the stamp for LA plaques here, but I only have two of them right now, so the room is still a work in progress. I decided to finish my day off with some light calisthenics. I started the day by taking care of my crops. While hitting this rock I managed to catch a second centipede, one more and I'll be able to get that model from Flick, which I will promptly banish from my island forever during a weekend market, so keep your eyes open for that. The recipe bottle was for a golden decorative plate, I assumed that it meant like a door plate, but no, it meant like a dinner plate. Kind of disappointing, to be honest. I saw a jewel beetle on my tree stem, it got too excited and accidentally scared it away, but I managed to redeem myself by catching the next one moments later, so it turned out fine, I think. I ran over to get my fortune told and then opened my gates to invite Kina over to the island. I had an item that she wanted and I didn't, and in exchange she dropped a boatload of presents on me. If I'm being honest, some of these are probably going to find their way into mystery bags. Once Kina had headed home, I went to make my purchases. I bought this ant farm and then a chemistry set that I didn't realize I already had in my storage, so now I have two. I guess I'll toss one into my market since I really don't need a second one. Then I headed over to the Able Sisters to buy these tacky sunglasses. I did some stretches, got jump scared by this giant dragonfly statue that I had put up here and forgotten about. Rocket had parked it in front of her own house and just refused to move the entire stream. Not sure what her deal was today. I checked my fossils and then headed down to the fossil exhibit to collect the stamps therein.
Once I was done, I stopped by the roost for my daily coffee, and then it was time for the main event, a villager hunt. Our first contestant was Naomi, which was a hard pass from me. I'm pretty neutral on the cow villagers in general, but I strongly dislike Naomi's design. On to the next island. I knew that I wanted a lazy villager to replace Jacob, but I don't think Dizzy is the vibe I'm really going for here. My heart is still set on Cranston, if I'm being honest. I would also take Bones. Third island, and as much as it pained me to cut the villager hunt short at the third island, I couldn't walk away from June. She was just too cute to leave behind. Look at her! She's adorable! I ran straight home so that I could clean up Jacob's trash heap. My original plan was to grandfather whoever moved in to be the new owner of the trash heap, but I couldn't do that to June. She deserves better. Once I had cleaned up, I headed to my house to redecorate my new basement. I hadn't even set foot in here since I had it built, and what better time to decorate it than live on stream? Probably any time. I don't know how entertaining it was for everyone to watch me hem and haw over where I was going to put the dozen or so gyroids that I threw into this room. The walls still feel too bare for my liking, but more gyroids would just be too much. I'll have to work on getting more stuff to throw up here the old-fashioned way. But until then, this is as done as it's going to get, so I called it there and headed to a Cap'n Island. It was a spring island and I spent some time catching flower petals before getting bored of it and heading back home. And with that, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the button that tells me so. I post new hard mode videos every Sunday, and I stream hard mode on Saturday evenings at 8pm Eastern Standard Time. If you want to make sure not to miss either of those things, please consider subscribing. I hope to see you all again next week.